Exercise 5.63. This is a really great exercise for getting you used to what it looks like when you're looking at the vague topology. Just like what sets look like and things are really weird in the... No, weak topology. Things are weird in the weak topology. and Or at least they're counterintuitive. And so this is a good exercise to give you an idea of some of the phenomenon. Phenomena? Whatever the plural of phenomenon is. So, of just things that can happen in weak topologies, or what weak topologies look like. Basically, open neighborhoods and weak topologies are really big. So, for part A, this one's not too bad. Let phi be in, let's see, we want to make H look fancy. I claim... Oh, we should probably have a orthonormal sequence. So let uk be orthonormal in, how do I do it? There. Let v be in h star. I claim v u n goes to zero. That's what it, we'll call this un. That's what it means to converge weakly to zero. It means that it, for every functional, the functional converges to the zero functional. So, since, wait, no, v of un converges to the number zero. Because a functional takes in a, value in the Hilbert space and gives you a scalar. So since V is in H star, we know that there is some Y in H. God, my H's are getting worse and worse. Such that for all X and H, V of UN is equal to the inner product of Y with UN. In this notation, this is a little bit non-standard, but it's kind of nice. The bar means that this is a, homer, uh, uh, what is it, a sesquilinear form or whatever, what, whatever it is. It's it's the it's a Hilbert space inner product, and um, so the the bar reminds you that oh you have to worry about um, like a a bar a bar b equals B bar A conjugate. So the bar reminds you to put the bar over the top. And here, the first court, typically when you have like um, A comma B, as in fallen, fallen uses A comma B, and the second entry is the one which is uh, uh, when you, it's like, I don't know if it's anti-linear or whatever, it's, it's conjugate linear, yeah, conjugate linear. So when you pull a scalar out of the second coordinate, or the second entry, it becomes conjugated. Here, when you pull an entry out of the first coordinate, it's conjugated. So anyways, now that we have all of that established, so this equals this. Mm. By Bessel's inequality, the sum from one to infinity of the norm of y in a product with un squared is equal to, no, it's not equal to, it's Bessel's inequality, so it's less than or equal to the sum from 1 to infinity of the norm of y squared. So this implies that this the norm of this inner product goes to 0 as n goes to infinity. So this goes to 0 because phi of un equals the inner product of y with un. And that's exactly what we wanted to show. So that's a, and that's that's not too weird, but b is where things start getting weird. To prove s is weakly dense in b, it suffices to prove that for any, let's make this S nicer, for any X and B, 
then x is in s bar w, which we will use to denote the weak closure of S, i.e. it's the closure of S with respect to the weak topology. And so for S to be weakly dense in B, it's precisely this is what it means. It means that any element of B is contained in the weak closure of S. So let, so we will first prove that zero belongs to S bar, weak, the weak closure of S. So to this end, let U be a weak neighborhood of zero. Then there exists functionals F1 through Fn in, see I wrote Xk, X star, but this is H star. And there exists V1 through Vn open. By the way, this proof that I'm giving, I'm pretty sure it works for any... I don't think it just works for Hilbert spaces. I think it works for more general inner product spaces. But in any case, um, we... Anyways, let, let's move on with this. So this V1 through Vn open, these are open in the scalar field K, such that zero is contained in the intersection from J equals one to N of Fj inverse of the set Vj contained in U, since such intersections form a basis for the weak topology. Because remember, the weak topology is the weakest topology which makes all linear functionals continuous. And so if you want to look at, if you want an open base, or if you want to look at a basis, what you do is you look at um, inverse images under these linear functionals of open sets in uh, the scalar field, and then you can take intersections because topologies are closed under intersections. But yeah, so so such sets form a basis for the weak topology, and so that's why you can say there is such a set, um, such an open neighborhood of zero which is contained in you. Each fj is linear, so make this a better then let's scroll down a little bit so what so zero this is the zero element in um in the ball b which is in our hilbert space h so this is this zero is in h so the fact that zero is in here implies that zero is in vj, and this is the scalar vj. And so, the intersection from one to n of the kernel of fj, well, what is the kernel? This is precisely the intersection, the kernel is precisely the inverse image of the singleton set zero, but this is certainly contained in the intersection of the vj is because each vj contains zero, and this we know is contained in u. Next, note that each kernel of fj has codimension at most one. And why is this? To see, th this is sort of a standard fact, but it's short enough, let's prove it. 
note that for each f in x star, what do we have? f of x is the inner product of y and x for some y in script h, and so the kernel of f is just a set of x and h such that inner product of y with x equals zero. But this is an inner product space. What is what is the set? It should look familiar. This is just the perpendicular of y. And this has co-dimension one if y is non-zero and zero if y is zero. Okay, so since the dimension of x is infinite, by assumption, the intersection of a whole bunch of things of co-dimension at most one cannot just be the zero vector. So let k be an element of the intersection of the kernels and set minus the element zero. Then lambda k is an intersection from one to n of kernel fj for all lambda. Now at first I wrote for all lambda in um, in c set minus zero, but let's see here, if lambda is zero, then certainly zero is in the kernel because every linear functional by linearity will send zero to zero. So this is for all lambda in c. So in particular, for lambda equals one over the norm of k, Lambda k is in intersection from one to kernel of fj. And what else do we have? We have the norm of lambda k equals one. So then the intersection of s with the current with the kernels of fj is empty, not empty. So you intersect s is not empty. That should you typically want the line to go through the circle to make the empty set. A funny story, I did see a textbook once that used phi, like the, the, the Greek letter phi, to denote the empty set, which I thought was horrendous. But, oh well, who am I to judge? So anyways, this holds for every weak neighborhood u of zero. And so hence, let's scroll up. Hence, what do we know? That tells us precisely that zero is in the weak closure of s. So now we look at the general case. So for any x in this ball, if u is a weak neighborhood of x, then u minus x is a weak neighborhood of 0. So then there is a linear subspace M of finite codimension in X such that M is contained in U minus X. And th this, this whole construction is pretty much identical to what we did above. And so then m, let's see here, m plus x is contained in u, but 
m plus x intersected with u with s is not z zero. I, I put not zero, but sh should be not just zero. Um, no, it should be this intersection is not empty. That's what I meant to put. Right, u minus x is a weak neighborhood of zero, so there's a linear subspace of finite codimension. Then this, but this. So what does that mean? Um, so thus, x is in S weak closure, and hence, b is contained in S closure. That is a really weird fact. And it goes against, certainly this topology has no correlation with um, any sort of geometric topology you might think in your head. Um, for example, when you look at the standard topology. So there's no way you can take the closure of the unit disk and get the entire unit ball. But that's how it works in the weak topology. So there we go. This completes the proof.